Hey everyone, so today I wanna to go over the importance of doing a fuel load calculation after the installation of a whole home emergency standby generator to know whether or not you need to upgrade your existing gas meter. Now, after I installed my Kohler 20KW generator, initially I thought that the meter I had on the house would be up to the job of keeping all my natural gas appliances properly fed. After I started looking into it, I kind of figured out that that probably wasn't really the case. Now, the meter that was initially on the house was rated at 250 CFH, which is cubic feet per hour of natural gas. Now, at the time, what I had in the house that was natural gas was the furnace, the water heater, the range slash oven, and the dryer itself. So that's a pretty common size meter that you're gonna find on a house, a single family residence that doesn't have something that is high consumption like a pool heater or a generator. So I reached out to PSE&G, my natural gas provider here in New Jersey, and I had a tech come out basically just to see what he recommended. So he looked at basically what I already had in the house and he looked at the fuel consumption rate of the generator and he said, you should probably go to the next level size meter, which is gonna be 425 CFH. He said that the meters will typically flow double what they're rated for, but I would ba it was basically really pushing the limits of the meter that I had, especially if basically all the appliances were trying to run at one time. So he said, I had to reach out to the construction department and proceed from there. So I called them, they sent me an email with the, what they call the residential gas load data inquiry sheets, one piece of paper, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's for whether it's new or existing gas service. And you basically just go through line by line, fill out your name, address, size of the house, things like that. And you get towards the bottom and you have the really important part of this sheet. All of your gas consuming appliances in your home will have some sort of a rating on them, a rating uh, sticker on them that will have the energy consumption on there. On the appliances themselves, they will be rated in what they call BTU, which is British Thermal Units. That's basically a form of uh, energy. So you're gonna basically have to go around and get all those numbers on the existing appliances and then on the new appliances and have to add them up. Now they have you write it down what they call MBTU. Basically that just means you drop the last three zeros off because the conversion of CFH to BTU is one to a thousand. So if you drop the last three zeros, it becomes a one to one. So it's pretty, pretty easy to read at that point since it's one to one. So the, if in my specific case, the existing stuff I had, the furnace, the water heater, the stove, and the dryer came to 256 CFH. So it was right at the rating level of the meter itself. But like I said, it'll go way above that. By adding the generator on, the generator itself was 340. So the generator itself used more natural gas than all the existing appliances combined in the house. So the new total for me was 596 CFH, so almost 600 CFH. So basically, if everything was running in the house, something would, everything would become starved for natural gas at that point, because it was just way beyond the capacity of that initial smaller meter that I had on the house. So he was basically right, I needed to go up to the, the next level. So I filled the rest of this paperwork out, and then on the bottom, you want to fill out your remarks. I put my account number on there, and I put basically that I had added the generator, and the tech recommended I needed to go to the next level up. Now, when you get this email or this uh, the email from your gas provider, in my case, I had two ways to send it back. I could either fax it to them or I could email it to them. He said you can also, um, instead of just scanning it and sending it back, you could take a picture and put it in the email and send it that way. Just make sure that it is uh, legible. He did recommend sending it by email because typically they get processed faster if it goes by email. And if you send it by email also, you get a, uh, a confirmation receipt that they received it. So I would recommend sending it by email than, than by fax if you have to, uh, to go through this process. Now, initially it says this could take up to four weeks, but they were really good. I sent this in on a Thursday, and by the following Tuesday, they got back to me and said that engineering had approved me for a 425, which is what the tech said I was going to need. And we we're basically going to go through the process of getting uh, getting that going. So they did send me one more email saying I do need to do an electrical calculation, but that was a pretty generic email. I just called them back and said, I'm not doing any electrical work. He said, no, that's just a normal generic email that goes out. And they were ready to basically schedule me because engineering had approved the new larger capacity meter. So this all happened within less than a week. Now they say, like I said, they say this could take up to four weeks. In my case, it just took less than a week. I don't know if I just got lucky, but they were really good to deal with. My, uh, my natural gas company, PSE&G, I've always had good luck with them. So out comes the following Friday comes the tech from PSE&G with my brand new meter. It took about an hour to put it in. Um, not really too many major hiccups. He, a couple of things here and there, but he just basically did a really beautiful clean install. 
and now I am well within the parameters of where I need to be with the new meter that he put in. So um, if you are putting a generator into your house, make sure you do this. It's probably not a bad idea to do this before you put it in just to kind of know where you're going to be at so you can go through the process and get this started when the generator goes in. But uh, like I said, the installation process was pretty easy. The new meter is considerably larger than the old one is. And now I don't have to worry about any of my appliances becoming starved. Now, would I be running every natural gas appliance in the house and the generator at the same time? Probably not in most cases. But here in New Jersey, if we get hit by something like another Hurricane Sandy where power's out for weeks at a time and for some people it was out for months, there's a pretty good possibility that everything could be running at one time. And with the initial, the original meter I had, I could really only run the generator and maybe one big item like the furnace or the stove itself at one time. And I was basically tapped out at that point. So now I should be able to run everything because that new meter, if it can hold double what it's rated for, now I'm getting at about 850. So I have a nice margin of error there. I can comfortably run everything in the house while running the generator simultaneously. So um, take the time, do this. If you're putting in that generator, this is another thing to consider and add to your list of things to do. But overall, this is a pretty easy process and they didn't even charge me for putting in the new meter. So uh, I'm really glad I reached out to them and they were very easy to deal with. And now I don't have to worry about having a gas meter that's not up to the job of feeding all my natural gas appliances at one time. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.